Ezekiel 12 and 24. For there shall be no more any vain vision nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. So there are people who use flattering divinations to lead you away from God, like flattering prophecies. That's a flattering divination. Job 17 and 5, he that speaks flattery to his friends, even the eyes of his children shall fail. Do you hear that? He that speaks flattery to his friends, even the eyes of his children shall fail. Proverbs 6 and 24, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. So what are evil women? Ones that will flatter you with their tongue. Doctrine and Covenants 121 and 20. Their basket shall not be full. Their houses and their barns shall perish, and they themselves shall be despised by those that flattered them. Let's read this again. Their basket shall not be full. Their houses and their barns shall perish, and they themselves shall be despised by those that flattered them. Mosiah 11 and 7. Yeah, and they also became all idolatrous because they were deceived by the vain and flattering words of the king and priests for they did speak flattering things unto them so people were carried away to idolatry by kings and priests for what because of the flattery of their words ether 2 and 8 and jared rebelled against his father and came and dwelt in the land of heath and it came to pass that he did flatter many people because of his cunning words, just like the prophecies of these people, until he had gained the half of the kingdom. So this man, because of his flattery and his cunning words, he gained half of the kingdom. He started a rebellion. Helaman 13 and 27 to 39. But behold, if a man shall come among you and shall say, do this, and there is no iniquity, do that, and you shall not suffer, yeah, he will say, walk after the pride of your own heart. Yeah, walk after the pride of your eyes and do whatsoever your heart desires. And if a man shall come among you and say this, you will receive him and say that he is a prophet. Yeah, you will lift him up and you will give unto him of your substance. You will give unto him of your gold and of your silver. And you will clothe him with costly apparel. And because he speaks flattering words unto you, and he says that all is well, then you will not find fault with him. Yeah. All these blessing, blessing prophecies and nobody taking accountability for the things that they've done and going to God with their repentance. Oh, you wicked and you perverse generation. You harden and stiffen you hardened and stiff-necked people. How long will you suppose that the Lord will suffer you? Yeah, how long will you suffer yourselves to be led by foolish and blind guides? Yeah, how long will you choose darkness rather than light? You, Yeah, ye behold, the anger of the Lord is already kindled against you. Behold, he has cursed the land because of your iniquity. Do you remember Moses had to take off his shoes to get into even the whole... God told him he's standing on holy ground. Do you understand Moses fasted 40 days and 40 nights to get the commandments from God? These people, and he had to even clean and wash his feet and do a, certain things before he can come into the holy presence of God. But you people, you look at these people and you know that they're not walking in holiness. You can see it. You don't even see light in their eyes. And you follow their vain words. Do with them doing priestcraft against you. Yeah, behold, the anger of the Lord is already kindled against you. Behold, he has cursed the land because of your iniquity. And behold, the time comes that he cursed your riches, that you become slippery, that you cannot hold them. And in the last days of your poverty, you cannot retain them. And in the days of your poverty, you shall cry unto the Lord. And in vain shall you cry, for your desolation is already come upon you. And your destruction is made sure. And then shall you weep and howl in that day, says the Lord of hosts. And then shall you lament and say, Oh, that if I had repented and had not killed the prophets and stoned them and cast them out. Yeah, in that day you shall say, Oh, that we had remembered the Lord our God. In that day, 
that he gave us our riches. And then they would not have become slippery that we should lose them. For behold, our riches are gone from us. When your riches don't come from God, it's because they come from the wicked one and you'll lose them. When your riches come from God, you don't lose them. Behold, we lay a tool here and on the morrow it is gone. And behold, our swords are taken from us in the day we have sought them for battle. Yeah, we have hid up our treasures and they have slipped away from us because of the curse of the land. Oh, that if we had repented in the day that the word of the Lord came unto us. For behold, the land is cursed and all things are become slippery and we cannot hold them. Behold, we are surrounded by demons. Yeah, and our, and we are encircled about by the angels of him who has sought to destroy our souls, the fallen angels, the evil angels. Behold, our iniquities are great. O Lord, canst thou not turn away thy anger from us? This is what God is saying you people are going to say. And th this shall be your language in those days. But behold, your days of probation are past. You have procrastinated the day of your salvation until it is everla everlastingly too late. And your destruction is made sure. Yeah, for you have sought all the days of your lives for that which you could not obtain. And you have sought for happiness in doing iniquity, which thing is contrary to the nature of that righteousness which is in our great and eternal head. O oh, you people of the land, that you would hear my words, and I pray that the anger of the Lord be turned away from you, and that you would repent and be saved. Helaman 2 and 5. Therefore he did flatter them, and also Cushamen, that if they would place him in the judgment seat, he would grant unto those who belong to his band that they should be placed in power and authority. So he flattered people to place him in power and authority among the people. Helaman 1 and 7. But behold, Panchi and that part of the people that were desirous that he should be their governor was exceedingly wroth. Therefore, he was about to flatter away those people to rise up in rebellion against their brother. What was he going to do? Flatter away the people to rise up in rebellion against their brethren. Jacob 7 and 2. And it came to pass that he began to preach among the people and to declare unto them, Jacob, your forefather, this is his book, and to declare unto them that there should be no Christ. He's saying there, there was some people who began to pre preach that there is no Christ. And he preached many things which were flattering unto the people. And this they did that they might overthrow the doctrine of Christ. Don't you hear people say there's no Christ? But there was somebody who started that doctrine to overthrow the doctrine of Christ. And he labored diligently that he might lead away the hearts of the people, insomuch that he did lead away many hearts. And he, knowing that I, Jacob, had faith in Christ, who should come, he sought much opportunity that he might come on to me. And he was learned that he had a perfect knowledge of the language of the people, wherefore he could use much flattery and much power of speech according to the power of the devil. This is what the fake prophets on these social media platforms do. They use flattery and much power of speech that they got from Satan. Power of speech. Word witching according to the power of the devil. Flattery and much power of speech according to the power of the devil. Alma 30 and 12. And this Antichrist whose name was Karahor and the law could have no no hold upon him, began to preach unto the people that there should be no Christ. An antichrist is someone who doesn't believe in Christ. It's someone who's against Christ. Antichrists are people. And there's the antichrist who's coming. He's against Christ. But at, there's the antichrist spirit. If you're antichrist, what's anti-something? There's the antichrist spirit. Some people need to cast that out. They're, those are the ones who say there's no Christ. And after this manner, he did, did he preach saying that there was no Christ. Now, 1 Thessalonians 2 and 5. For neither at any time used 
we flattering words, prophets, seers, teachers of God, people who are appointed and anointed from God are not going to come to you with flattering words. They're not going to come to you with popular subjects because God wants you to take accountability for your sins and repent from them and forsake them. They're not going to tell you once saved, always save. They're not going to tell you that. They're going to tell you to repent every day and get your house in order and teach your children the truth and train them up in righteousness. They're not going to be telling you the same thing. They're going to be saying God's word to you for you to learn righteousness, for you to get salvation with God. Not half-stepping, telling you exactly what it is, what it is, and not what it ain't. Not the lukewarm doctrine that they're pushing all over the place. Doctrine and Covenants 10 and 63. And this I do that I may establish my gospel, that there may not be so much contention. Yeah, Satan does stir up the hearts of the people to contention. That's why I said, if you have knowledge and wisdom, if you have understanding and wisdom from God, you won't open up your mouth in debate. You won't be, you'll be opening up your mouth in understanding to show people what God is saying. You don't have to argue with them. You don't have to debate. There's no debate with clear understanding. People to contention concerning the points of my doctrine. So Satan does stir up the hearts of the people to contention concerning the points of my doctrine. God knows that. And in these things, they do err. Didn't I tell you, you shouldn't debate? If you don't agree with someone, I've taught you to fast and pray and ask God if the person that is ministering to you is from him or if they're telling the truth or if they said something that you don't agree with and you don't think that's a, that it's in his word, then you should take it to God and ask him if that is true and ask him what that means in his word. For they do rest the scriptures and do not understand them because they're not fasting and asking God for understanding. They read something and they say that is what it is. But God is understanding. You need to get it from him. Doctrine and covenants 10 and 21 to 28. And their hearts are corrupt and full of wickedness and abominations. And they love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Therefore, they will not ask of me. Why won't they ask God? They love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Therefore, they will not ask me. They won't ask God for the understanding to know what the scriptures mean. So they rest scriptures. They make contentions and they debate with people. And thus he has laid a cunning plan, thinking to destroy the work of God. So Satan stirs them up that he may lead their souls to destruction. That And because Satan knows you're not supposed to be debating and in contention over God's word. Satan stirs them up that he may lead their souls to destruction. And thus he has laid a cunning plan, thinking to destroy the work of God. But I will, I will require this at their, their hands, and it shall turn to their shame and condemnation in the day of judgment. Didn't I tell you that? Didn't I tell you you're not supposed to be doing this debate thing? If you have the spirit of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you can explain yourself. You will open your mouth with wisdom. People will understand what you're saying and turn away from unrighteousness and wickedness. And they will repent. But when you're debating, it's an argument, it's a quarrel. You're not getting anywhere. Nobody's learning. You're stirring up contention. Yeah, he stirs up their hearts to anger against this work. Yeah, he says unto them, deceive and lie and wait to catch, that they may destroy. Behold, this is no harm. And thus he flatters them and tells them that it is no sin to lie, that they may catch a man in a lie, that they may destroy him. And thus he flattered them and lead them along until he dragged their souls down to hell. And thus he caused them to catch themselves in their own snare by lying, lying to the people. Every day coming on YouTube, God said this, God told me this, God told me to tell you people that it's, I have a prophetic word. I have a prophetic word. Lying on God every day. And thus he flattered them and led them along until he dragged their souls down to hell. 
and thus he caused them to catch themselves in their own snare. And thus he goes up and down to and fro in the earth, seeking to destroy the souls of men. Verily, verily, I say unto you, woe be unto him that lies to deceive, because he supports that another lies to deceive. For such are not exempt from the justice of God. Behold, I say unto you that you shall not translate again those words which have gone forth out of your hands. For behold, they shall not accomplish their evil designs in lying against those words. The people who translate God's word and are lying, God said they're not going to accomplish their evil designs. For behold, if you should bring forth the same words, they will say that you have lied and that you have pretended to translate, but that you have contradicted yourself. And behold, they will publish this and Satan will harden the hearts of the people to stir them up to anger against you when you're speaking the truth of God. They love the false prophets that, that they will not believe my words. Thus Satan thinks to overpower your testimony in this generation that the work may not come forth in this generation. But behold, here is wisdom. And because I show unto you wisdom and give you commandments concerning these things, what you shall do, show it not unto the world until you have accomplished the work of translation. Marvel not that I say unto you, here is wisdom, show it not unto the world. For I say, for I said, show it not unto the world that you may be preserved. Because not everybody has wisdom, people of God. And they will take your good words and turn it into evil because this is a generation that calls good evil and evil good. Because you cannot always judge the righteous. Why did God tell you this? Behold, I do not say that you shall not show it unto the righteous. God said for you to show, he never said for you not to show it unto the righteous. But as you cannot always judge the righteous, or as you cannot always tell the wicked from the righteous. Therefore I say unto you, hold your peace until I shall see fit to make all things known unto the world concerning the matter. You need to fast and pray and ask God who ministers to you. I will not suffer that they should destroy my work. Yeah, I will show unto them that my wisdom is greater than the cunning of the devil. Behold, they have only got a part or an abridgment of the account of Nephi. Behold, there are many things engraven upon the plates of Nephi which do throw greater views upon my gospel. Therefore, it is wisdom in me that you should translate this first part of the engravings of Nephi and send forth this work. Now, and this I do that I may establish my gospel that there may not be so much contention. Yeah, Satan does stir up their hearts of the people to contention concerning the points of my doctrine. And these things they do err, for they do rest the scriptures and do not understand them. Therefore, I will unfold unto them this great mystery. For behold, I will gather them as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, if they will not harden their hearts. Yeah, if they will come, they may and partake of the waters of life freely. Behold, this is my doctrine. Whosoever repents and comes unto me, the same is my church. Whosoever declares more or less than this, the same is not of me, but is against me. Therefore, he is not of my church. And now, behold, whosoever is of my church and endures of my church to the end, him will I establish upon my rock, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. And now, remember the words of him who is the life and light of the world, your Redeemer, your Lord, and your God. Amen.